Well, welcome back to Spud Run Golf, guys. I'm Jeremy here in Southern High at our backyard golf hole. We're driving up to today's project, and I think you're going to like it. As we approach the winter season, we shall conquer projects that were put on hold during the summer growing months here in our backyard golf hole. Today, we shall get started on our number five tee box extension. Why not? Augusta did it. A few of the keynotes you'll need to know are as follows. We will be extending this tee box back into the woods approximately 60 yards. So as you can see, we will need to remove quite a bit of trees. We will be using synthetic tee box turf. The lack of sunlight in this shoot that we are creating will not allow us to maintain a decent natural grass launch zone. We'll talk more about this later. The natural grade up here drops from side to side over 22 inches, so we'll need to install a retaining wall on the lower side. I have some large stones that I think we can use to blend in with the natural environment. Here again, running low on time this evening. But I gotta show you this. I'm walking back to get the track up before we start setting these stones. It just looks beautiful out here today. It is November and we're just so lucky to have a good, just a beautiful evening. Me and Cruz played a few holes earlier. Should be doing that right now. These days are numbered here in Southern Ohio. So the stone you see here, that's our bulldoze stone. So we're gonna make that with the first one. Our stone rocks, we're gonna call that different. So I need that to extend out a little farther past here. We'll get into some roots. Now the problem with these stones, they're not exactly the same size. We're gonna make it work though. I can already tell right now, we're still running downhill a little bit, but I think when I set that, I can fix that. on level to me. We got some folks in from North Carolina. They just rolled in here about 20 minutes ago. And I am really surprised nobody has tried to rent the Airbnb for next spring. And like get four of your or three of your buddies to rent that Airbnb, you get a hold of me privately. You're gonna be able to play the course. We'll have to work out something price-wise, but uh, I think the Airbnb is about 225 a night. Come stay for a couple days, take the golf cart back and forth, be in there like swimwear. You have to run all to yourself. Well, now we're going to get some material to fill that base up. And there's several different options we could use, depending on where you're at in the country or whatnot. We're just going to use sand. We're not crazy building it up a bunch. Sand's easy to screed. So we're going to the gravel plant now to get a load of sand and take it out. Now, it did rain a bunch last night, and I haven't been up there. I'm just getting off work. It might be too muddy, I hope not. But uh, we'll at least get the sand out there to the course. And then if we can't work on it today, we'll work on it tomorrow. All right, we're we'll going to go with plan B. You guys will get to see a storage unit. I actually own a storage unit facility. And I do believe I have some, some eights or some gravel out there that we can go load up. I've got a skid loader out there. So that's where we're going next. Plan B in effect right now. So here we are at our storage facility. So I got plenty of sand and I guess I was just being lazy, but I'll scoop that up. That's was left over from jobs here local in town. We'll put it here in the 550. And these storage units are pretty small. There's about 100 units here. People do outside storage too. And then like I said, about 97 or 100 units of storage. This is our old skid loader, old faithful. Should fire right up though. Do. 
Another thing I'm gonna have to do is these voids where these rocks aren't completely rectangular or square. I gotta get some concrete to seal that so this sand doesn't just keep washing out. So I've got some concrete. Uh, it's kind of one of the next steps. About out of daylight, but I also need to build this up with dirt on the parts that won't have the turf. So this back side needs to build up with dirt because I don't care if it settles. Then the front side needs to build up with dirt and that dirt will actually, when this is done, it'll kind of, yeah, just lead from the synthetic turf out to the, the regular grass. But before I can pack this, I got to get a little bit smoother. Kind of the smoother that is, the better compaction rates we'll get. For what it matters, if this was like a paver patio, I wouldn't have built that lift up that high. That's a 12 inch lift, that's pretty aggressive for a plate compactor. Now this top side is not as deep. Yeah, I'm gonna make it level now. What? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make it level now. Oh, I'm gonna make it to the third one. What do you mean you can't make it to the third one? I can't make it to the third one. Our sand is pretty dirty, which gives us stuff like that right there. Something I can deal with. I don't install artificial turf for a living, but we do a lot of pavers and concrete, so it's kind of the same process as a paver patio. But we'd had better gravel underneath. So I am somewhat familiar with what is going on right now. And if we were on a commercial job, this sand would be unacceptable for me to screen. Not by code, just we don't want junk sand. You always kind of watch one side, like when I'm dozing, I watch one side of the blade. I never try to watch both sides. And after you do it a while, you'll get used to it. And you'll sense where the other side of the blade is at. Like right now, I'm just letting my right hand float. Now I'm letting my left hand float. I'm not trying to make this sound more complicated than it is, but it's really coming together. The problem right now is I'm not going to be able to put this turp down today. It's just, it's too muddy. Too daggone muddy. So to confirm our space, that is roughly at the seven foot mark, which was what our tee box width would be, front to back, this is our 12, so I got a thing. And that's, that's plenty of room a ball up. Anything more just gonna be wasting this expensive material. You know, that's plenty of room. Come get you some. Cut fade, power fade. It's that left-handed form, straight right arm. Now comes the fun part. Cutting this and not jacking it up. Probably the best opportunity to show you guys the thickness. So it's about an inch and a quarter total thickness. And this one seven by 12 piece, I'm saying it's over 100 pounds. This is definitely a two man job. Probably too much for this old fat man. Oh my 
goodness, this is gonna take forever. Guys, I can't wait no longer. I've got to hit a ball off this thing. We were putting the sand on and it started downpouring, so we're going to have to let this dry out. But in the meantime, I want to do this so bad. I've got an 8 iron, so let's see how far that 8 iron gets me out in the fairway. So that ball made it to about the 145. Caught it fat though, and it just scooted through the treetops right here. Try like a Let's try like a Stinger 5 iron. Alright, that is money. Alright, let's see if the T goes in this thing like it's supposed to. Oh, yeah. So, one more thing I'm a little bit worried about is this tree right here. Because our, our average uh, golfers out here, if that ball would hit that tree and come back, it's not going to be good for the people standing here or golf carts or camera equipment. So we've got the big dog driver out. I am gonna to try to pay, play a power fade to see if I can at least get to the creek in front of the green. <laughs> so that was a straight ball that did not, uh, that flew the number four to you. And just because you got a backyard golf hole don't mean you're good. All right. One more try at the power fade to see how close we can get to that green. Because honestly, guys, I don't know how far this thing's playing. All right, one more shot. We're going to hit a driver off the deck. This is an eight and a half degree tightless driver. And I believe with this here, we can play a nice. That's called a power fade. Oh my, that's beautiful. That one flew the creek right in front of the green, and that was, I probably bombed that one 285. Landed in the creek. So I think this tee box plays well. Now if we get some really, really good players that can bomb the ball 310, 315, I think they can get over the creek. As a matter of fact, get in the green, I don't think it's gonna happen. One day, make me eat my words. Mr. High Dollar Cannon Camera. I'm not gonna try to hit you, but if I do, I know my subscribers will kick a buck. How about a driver stinger? Coming at you, dog. But I can't imagine how cool this is going to sound when these leaves are all on. Nice little shotgun out of the tree stand coming out in the field. Just like yet. The weather's just been crappy, terrible, pitiful. We'll get this all done. I've got some plans to landscape around the tee, seed this entrance, this shoot is going to be done. Hit the like button, subscribe. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing with us, Spud Run Golf. Over and out.